Hi everybody. Uh, before we actually get into the video, I already need to make a correction on myself. I did uh, review the segment we are about to watch. I made the mistake that I always make. That is why I double checked to make sure I said it correctly, and indeed I did not. When you're talking about the spectrums of light and the various wavelengths, you will hear me talk about the 380 to 400 nanometer range being the red end and the 700 nanometer range being the blue end. Uh, this is completely backwards. The 380 to 400 nanometer range is actually the blue end and the 700 nanometer range is actually the red end of the range. So make that transposition when I actually say that later in this video and other than that I'm satisfied with everything I said. Remember this is just going to be the opening uh, video in a much larger conversation about light and how it works in your aquarium. So please sit back and enjoy. Alright everybody, today we've got a before and after we're going to shoot here of the Garami tank. But I'm not going to talk so much tank maintenance today because I'm not really going to do a lot. I'm just going to do a big water change like I normally do. I'm going to spray some hydrogen peroxide on some exposed surfaces like I normally do. You can see all this stuff on any of my other water change before and after type videos, etc., etc. Um, what I want to talk about a little bit today is the reason I have so much green in this tank. I'm not sure if it is cyanobacteria or algae or a combination of the two. Uh, there's more than one species of either, so, you know, just because you say cyanobacteria, it does not necessarily limit it to one specific thing. Uh, there's, there's a variety of different uh, species that grow in there. I have green stuff growing in there, I have purple stuff growing in there, I've got fuzzy stuff growing in there. Um, the long and short of it, however, is all of the stuff that grows, the nuisance growth that you will get in tanks, whether it's cyanobacteria or algae, uh, and there's very little difference. Um, cyanobacteria is almost like bacteria that wants to be algae. It may even have some um, plant material within the cell itself to generate energy from photosynthesis or something like that. But cyanobacteria is, an, is a bacteria that actually utilizes light uh, in much the same way that algae and plants use light. It needs light for, for photosynthesis in order to survive. So cyanobacteria is very similar to algae in our fish tanks as far as its needs. It needs the nutrients, it needs the phosphates, it needs the lighting, etc. So why do I have so much of that kind of growth, this nuisance growth, in this tank when I don't really seem to have as much of it in others? And I do have some, as you know, uh, well, you know if you follow my videos. Uh, but not like this tank. This tank is just kind of over the top. And the reason is, is the lighting. I have very inexpensive LEDs on top of this tank. And they are LEDs that have been repurposed. They were not made to be on a fish tank. They were not made to grow plants. They were made to just be very, very inexpensive outdoor lighting to just light up your driveway or whatever. They're just uh, floodlights that I've repurposed for this fish tank. Now, I did this before I really had an understanding of what I was doing. This is one of the earlier tanks I've set up, and I haven't changed a whole lot uh, as far as the mechanics of it. Uh, the, the, the nature of the tank has changed somewhat, but I have not really changed over my lighting. And that is where the problem lies. Not all light is created equal. Um, Plants require, if you, if you look at plants and plant growth and you get into planted tanks and that sort of thing, you're going to come across the term PAR, P-A-R. That stands for photosynthetically active radiation. What that means, and I will do a video all about light itself, I'm just not up for that today. Light is some really strange stuff and it'll be a really weird, complicated video when I really break down the theory of light and how light works and how we perceive it and how it behaves. Um, etc. Um, but light is, in short, just a certain section or a certain spectrum of the full electromagnetic spectrum. So this little section of it that we can see we call visible light. And it falls between roughly 380 nanometers and 700 nanometers. 
The 380 nanometers or 400 nanometers is where you're getting into the visible red. It's, you're, you're just getting out of the infrared and you're getting into the visible red spectrum. Now when you go all the way up to the higher energy wavelengths and you get up into the very, very violets and the very top end of the blues that we can see, you're up to about 700 um, nanometer uh, wavelength. Beyond that, you get into the ultraviolet, where plants can still use a little bit of that, but not much. In fact, 700 is already beyond what we can see, but the plants are still able to use it. So all of the light that falls, or all of the radiation, really, that falls between 380 and 700 nanometers is PAR radiation. It's photosynthetically active radiation. Plants need all of that. However, they need some of it more than others. Um, there's a big spike down in the red end, and there's a big spike up in the blue end that plants utilize most. And ten years ago, if you were to look at LEDs that were designed for growing plants and not showing them, uh, you would see panels that were comprised solely of red and blue LEDs. I've used many of these, many different kinds, many different price ranges, and they all work to a limited extent. None of them grow plants properly. Um, so come to find out, in addition to these big spike areas, the middle spectrums, you know, the, the greens and the yellows, all those spectrums that fall between this big spike in the red and this big spike in the blue, were typically thought of as like waste light that plants don't use. That's still basically true. Plants do need some of that light, but not a lot of it. They won't grow properly if they don't have the full spectrum. You cannot grow plants on just the reds and just the blues. However, the bulk of the light in the middle of that spectrum falls into the sort of greens and yellows and that's why plants appear to be green and yellow. Any light they're using they actually absorb and you don't see that color. What color you see is the color that's the plants not using and it's reflecting it back off. That's why the plants look green. They don't use very much of that green at all. It reflects back out of them. So there's a point to all of this and that point is that your nuisance growth in tanks has evolved to utilize mostly in that garbage range, in that greens and yellows that your plants don't use. It's the leftover light that is just used up by the, this nuisance stuff. That's why it grows so vigorously. So, why am I getting that in this tank? If you remember a while back, I said not all light is created equal. If you think about the different color spectrums being different colors, or the different wavelengths of being different colors, and again, I'll go into all of this in more detail in another video. It gets kind of weird, like I said. <clears throat> Excuse me. Each different color, think about it as the color of paint. You know, you can mix different colors together, and you'll get a third color. You know, red and blue make green, etc., etc. So, you do the same thing when you're mixing colors of light. And if you will notice, you have these different, and this is something altogether different, it's you get into color temperature, and it's usually listed in degrees Kelvin. You'll see 6500K commonly, or, or 5000K, or whatever. That is a different kind of thing, which again will be in this other video about light. But what that basically represents is the color spectrum overall uh, that is not the mothership landing, that is my laundry being done um, the color spectrum overall is what that color temperature is so 6500K would be a fairly blue light we'll say and I'm very much simplifying this for the sake of this video so your 6500K is what you would want to use in a normal planted tank a marine tank is something different but a normal planted tank you want to be between 6500K and 10,000K you don't want to go under that and you don't want to go over that and there's reasons for that um, so to arrive at 6500K 
you can have different recipes of light. Now when you've got fluorescent tubes or you've got incandescents or HIDs or something, they produce light very differently and they don't really fall into what I'm talking about. This is strictly for LEDs, which is what is on this tank. If you mix various spectrums together, the end result may be 6500K. But what amounts of what lights are you mixing together to get that 6500K color temperature? Cheap LEDs sort of cheat and they use different phosphors or the semiconductors they use are these sort of inexpensive ones that fall into these yellow and green spectrums very heavily and what you wind up with is this nice visibly 6500K light but it's made out of a bunch of spectrums that are in and of themselves undesirable spectrums within your tank and that's what I've got going on here if you followed all that. I have this nice bright looking light, but I'm flooding my tank with all of these waste type spectrums that we'll call them that the cyanobacteria and the algae have evolved to thoroughly utilize. So I'm basically providing better lighting for my nuisance growth than I am for my actual desired growth. So this is why before I've stressed the importance if you have tubes uh, you need to change them out once a year because their quality of the light does degrade and not only will you not be providing your desired plants enough of the proper spectrums you'll actually be increasing the amount of undesirable spectrums and you'll be doing what I'm doing effectively and you'll be feeding light to your algae and your cyanobacteria so having nice good new-ish you know within a year old tubes is very important but when you get to LEDs, it's the way LEDs make light, and again, I'll do a whole video about LEDs and how LEDs work. It's really neat. It's really interesting. But there's a lot of different ways you can come up with the same color light on the other end. Now, I'm not knocking these lights. For what they are, they're fine. They, they, were, not, they were never meant to do what I'm using them for. Uh, for the $10 a piece I've paid for them, I've gotten well over a year and a half's use out of them now. No complaints. I'm just using the wrong lighting for my tank. So this is 100% my fault. And it was just because of my ignorance. I didn't know any of this when I put these lights on there. I had no idea about cyanobacteria or whatever. So the long and short of it is, is I really need to get this lighting off of here and get good quality lighting on here. I am going to stick with the LEDs because I like the effect you get from them. You get that nice sparkly, uh, sort of shimmery light you get from a natural sunlight. Uh, again, I will explain how LEDs produce light, etc., etc. Um, I've actually got a new playlist called Lighting, uh, or Aquarium Lighting, and eventually I will get more and more into light and how light itself works and that sort of stuff because I really am fascinated by light. I'm obsessed with lighting. Um, so the lighting on this tank will be changing here in the near future, um, at least for my tank. I don't know how visibly different it will look. Uh, I hope it will be at least brighter. So I'm going to get started with the water change and everything. I'm not going to do a whole lot of the in-between kind of stuff, as I said before. So sit tight, and I'll just give you the nice after when we're done all of this and uh, any closing final thoughts. All right, everybody, there's your after. So I don't really have any closing thoughts. I think I pretty much covered everything. I just wanted to give you one final look at what the tank looks like now that it is done. Uh, you can see the water now that the tannins have been removed, the uh, light is much clearer, and you can see exactly what I was talking about. It's a nice bright white light. It looks every bit of 6500K to me. It's just made up out of a lot of the wavelengths and spectrums that are undesirable for this tank. So in time, I will replace these lights. I'll get some much better lighting on there, and hopefully we'll get on top of all of that cyanobacteria and it will not be this constant hassle that I have to get in there and get out. It'll be just like all my other tanks where it's just simply a part of the everyday maintenance of the tank. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If you're not already subscribed, please go ahead and do so. That way you won't miss any updates. i uh, got a few things in the works, so if you're subscribed, you won't miss anything coming up. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I will see you on the next one.